Tim Martinez, you are the winner of last week's giveaway. Enjoy your hot list. What's good, comic fam? Welcome to your hot list of comics. The comics that are defining this generation of collectors. And I'm at the table virtually with the good friend Jem from Gem Mint Collectibles. How you doing? I'm doing great. What's going on, Comic Tom? What's going on, Comic La Familia? Hit that subscribe button, slap that like button. We bring this video to you every single week, and we got to jump into this list at number 10 with possibly the worst-looking key comic book in existence. This might be the ugliest X-Men first appearance cover of all time. We're talking about Avengers Annual 10, the first appearance of Rogue. Yo, I straight up started complaining about this cover, and you cut me off, and you started ranting. You don't like this either, huh? No, nah, it's a terrible cover. It's like a, it's like an interior page for a cover. That's right. It's just cluttered. And for the longest time, I didn't even notice that Rogue is actually on it. The shadowy figure that's like hidden down there happens to be the first Rogue. But here we go. We're talking about the direct market edition because we have seen some substantial hikes in price over the last literally 10 months but let's hit him with the newsstand record breaker this week because that right there is impressive yeah because we've been talking about copper age newsstand issues like asm 299 asm 361 batman adventures 12 we have a record-breaking newsstand sale of 1675 dollars now let's talk about the direct market edition Earlier this year, at the start, pre-pandemic, CGC 9.8 is hitting $300. Then we keep going in May. Oh, wow. Broke $400. Now we're looking in June, breaking $500, officially doubling in price mid-year. And then September saw $700 highs. Right now, we're reporting on sales hitting as high as $950 this month. But as low as 850 it's hovering around there yeah so that makes sense why we saw that 1675 sale for the newsstand it's going for about double compared to the direct market Jem, that newsstand bump is real the newsstand effect is in high gear it's hot and it's flaming like the motorcycle on this next cover at number nine johnny blazing in with marvel spotlight issue number five the first appearance of ghost rider yeah, this is one of those Copper Age keys with a black cover that is just super tough and high grade. It's just relentless when it shows those white color breaking ticks, which makes 9.0s essentially grails for this book. But now we're seeing 8.0s kind of rising up and becoming sought after as well. You got to keep in mind, there are only three CGC 9.8s on the census. Super rare and high grade. Hellstrom over on Hulu dropped last month to a lot of people's surprise. It was actually pretty dang good. And there was a lot of alluding to the spirit of vengeance. And really, that was the direction. We were going to see, very likely, Ghost Rider in the Hulu Supernatural universe. Until the big change in Kevin Feige getting involved, moving all the Supernatural plans to franchises like Moon Knight, Werewolf by Night, probably Blade and Morbius, abandoning the original Hulu plan. Ghost Rider's in limbo, but this blue chip book is still seeing records broken. We had two record-breaking sales this week. We have an 8.0, which previously held a record at $2,750, sold for $3,200. Then a 9.2, which once held a record of $4,400, sold for a whopping $5,290. Now at the list at number eight, Jem, we have what once was the number one hottest book in the world for four weeks and counting has dropped to number eight. Still impressive that it's on the list, but it's definitely moved. We have ASM number 300, the new Stan variant. Wow. How the mighty have fallen from number one to number eight. I don't know what it is. Maybe everybody scooped up their copy within that last month. But uh, it definitely dropped down on the list. We're talking the first full appearance of Venom, the most graded CGC book in history. But it's all about the newsstands, comic fam. This book is what changed the market this year, surprising dealers and comic collectors across the world, setting the stage, the benchmark for the height of what 9.8 copies can go for. But it didn't stop there. It had a trickle effect to lower grade copies, which is what we're reporting on today. 
Yeah, that's a good point because it used to be that the newsstand effect only mattered in a 9.8 in the super high grade book, but we're starting to see that effect across the board. We have CGC 8.0s that used to sell for 525, they're selling for 550. 7.0s that used to sell for 415, are selling for 500. 6.0s that used to sell for $355, now selling for 400. And we have a 2.5 that had a record of $240, now selling for 265. We also know that later this year, the original cover to ASM 299 is coming to the market. I don't think we've seen the last of not just this book, but the McFarlane Trifecta Keys. And you know we're talking 298, 299, and that 300. I'm going to have to put a bid in for that. Coming in at number seven on the list for the second week in a row, we have the strange talent of Luther Strode, number one from Image Comics. Can you believe that nine years ago, this very month, this Image comic book debuted, introducing the world to the very talented writer Justin Jordan and the incredibly talented Trad Moore. You know his work from Silver Surfer Black. This gentleman draws modern day surrealism and psychedelics like no one else in modern comics. And this comic book had a low print count of 8,000. Now, back nine years ago, people didn't really pick it up that much, and we haven't seen a whole lot of sales between now and then. However, after Bad Idea CEO Dinesh Shandasamy announced that this project has been officially optioned by his very own production company, the comics moved $35 to $75. Now we're seeing highs at $150 sustain week over week. But get this. No CGC 9.8s have been seen hit the market yet. No sales yet. And I'm expecting when that lands, this record is going to be shattered. There is a lonely 23 graded copies on the CGC census. Where are those 9.8s? When they hit the market, we're going to be surprised. There's a second print variant out there that's averaging only $5. Like this book is being super slept on. You got to dig into them boxes at your LCS and try to find a copy. With individuals attached to the production company, with resumes that reference Bloodshot, The Witcher, Final Fantasy, we have Hive Mind, Lionsgate, Valiant Comics, and Marvel Comics. Seeing an independent comic book get optioned during pandemic has collectors' ears perked, and it makes sense why this book is seeing all new heights. Hold up, Tom. You got to let me introduce number six on the list. This is my favorite cover of all time. Amazing Spider-Man 316 making its way on the list for the first time. This is the third appearance of Venom, the first cover appearance. It's a classic Todd McFarlane story, and it's Venom coming back after his first appearance. That trifecta, ASM 298, 299, 300. He goes away for a year and comes back for some very mature storytelling. That's right. This is the peak of 80s mature comics. And when Venom was reintroduced to the ASM run, you knew he mean business. They start out the story with him strangling a rat, beating up Black Cat, bloody face and just wood shards everywhere. He explodes through cattle while fighting with Spider-Man like he's A-Train. Raising the hype of ASM fans across the country to all new levels. Especially since Eddie Brock, our Venom symbiote wearer, covers ASM in cattle intestines and blood. This stuff was mature and people loved it. Yeah, this was the beginning of Venom Mania. He would eventually go on to get his own series and become the Lethal Protector and obviously into movies as he is today. Let's talk about what his first full cover appearance is doing. This was a $595 book in a CGC 9.8. Early this November, we saw sales go to $610 to $750. And just this week, we have a record-breaking sale of $995. Now, these are some impressive gains, almost too impressive. I mean, a couple hundred dollars hike in just a week. I mean, this book is nearly $1,000. Is it an outlier? It may be. It may come down a little bit. But when we chat about the newsstands, I'm thinking you're going to be convinced otherwise. In August, we had a newsstand edition of a CGC 9.8 sell for $675. The new record that sold on Halloween of 2020 went for $1,349. But within 24 hours, we saw a $1,700 sale in a newsstand 9.8. 
$1,700, Gem. What's going on? The newsstand effect is here again on the list. And it actually makes a lot of sense. It keeps happening. I'm not actually surprised whatsoever. All right, moving over to number five on the list. We have Superboy number nine. Were we wrong on calling this book a flop, a bad investment, a book that you shouldn't put money into? Oh my gosh, Jim, the community is going to see this book, make the list and go, these guys don't know what they're talking about. They literally went on the mic and said, this book will not be a comic book that will define a generation of collectors long term. It's not one that we would put your money behind. I don't know. I, I feel like they can call us on something right now. And I say, we still were right. This book is so lucky that it has all these different versions, DC Universe logo versions, Mark Jewelers variants. Without that, it wouldn't be on this list. Why did it make the list at number five this week? All right, so we do have the first appearance of King Shark. We've been chatting about Superboy number nine for quite a while now because of DC fandom. We know that King Shark's going to be in the James Gunn Suicide Squad 2 movie. Heck, Suicide Squad versus the JLA or whatever they're calling it, they're going to get a video game and King Shark is in it. So there's a lot of reason to spec on this character. But this isn't the book that made the list, guys, because we're talking about the DC Universe logo reprint this is a variant it was a variant that was included in packs of comics that were sold at toys r us and the like some of these packs were packets of four eight and thirty and we have been chatting on this show for over two and a half years about these variants and how they should be ones that you not only know about but you should be on the hunt for hit that subscribe button just a little over a quarter ago, this book in a 9.8 was going for $150. Then we have a new sale of $599. We're thinking we hit the peak. But nope, this week we have a record-breaking sale of $699. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a good investment. If you find this book at your local comic shop, you send it to CGC and it hits a 9.8. I'm just saying that. I don't think it's got long legs. Keep an eye out for that different logo on the covers of DC comic books. That's an indicator that it could be a very scarce variant. Some collectors consider some of these variants ghosts because they are literally some of the rarest comic books in the DC comic line. And this one isn't the only key that has that DC you variant that you should be after we have green lantern 48 the first appearance of kyle rayner we've been chatting a lot about hbo max that comic book is of interest right now man of steel 18 the first appearance of doomsday download key collector comics use that code tom 101 it'll unlock a free one week subscription but it'll give you access to the category of dcu local variants so you know what you should be keeping an eye out for because there's also some major grails that have this logo as well Make sure to check out that category on Key Collector app for DCU. Jem, it's no surprise that collectors are after this type of variant, but I think the attention needs to be brought back to those Mark Jeweler variants. Let's hit him with some very impressive price differences between the Direct, the New Stand, and the Mark Jeweler insert. You have Uncanny X-Men 266, what the market has determined to be the first full appearance of Gambit has a Mark Jewelers variant. Check out these numbers. You have a direct market 9.8 that goes for $500. You have the coveted newsstand edition that goes for $750. But that Mark Jewelers variant goes for $2,400. Huge difference compared to those other versions. Then let's take a look at New Mutants 98, the first appearance of Deadpool. A regular CGC 9.8 goes for $900. The newsstands in 9.8 are going for $1,200. But that Mark Jewelers variant, $2,200. The Mark Jeweler insert didn't just affect the mutants, Gem. We have Hulk 340 classic McFarlane cover. CGC 9.8s have seen some impressive gains over the year, hitting $750. But we have that newsstand effect times two multiplier going for $1,500. But get this, $4,000 for a Mark Jeweler 9.8. Keep an eye out for that insert. It's going to be a different color, and you can spot it from above, comic fam. You got to train those eyeballs. <laughs> and now we're at the list in number four. We knew that this book would make it here eventually, but I didn't realize how quickly it would spike up on the list. But after Star Wars Mandalorian Episode 1 Season 2, well, we got to talk about Star Wars number 42, the first appearance of Emperor Palpatine. Of course, you know, Dark Sidious. But we also have the first appearance of Yoda, unnamed, of course. We also have the cameo appearance of IG-88. Yes. Oh, and of course, the first appearance of Boba Fett. 
We are in full Mandalorian effect here, people. Without spoilers, we did get a little bit of a Boba Fett teaser at the end of Season 2, Episode 1, and this book is on fire. We have CGC 9.4s hitting new highs at $330, CGC 9.6 hitting $1,000, and of course, CGC 9.8s, which hit $1,000 back in July, two sales at $1,500 and a 9.8 this week alone. Next thing we got to do is keep an eye out for those newsstands. I know the newsstands are going to hit and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. And I'm seeing this week rumors that Boba Fett may be getting his own spinoff series. If that's the case, you're going to have to put this guy in the ranks of Ahsoka Tano, which we haven't even seen make this list in recent weeks. But every Friday we get another chance. All right, guys, coming in at number three on the list, we have a mastermind behind two of the books on this list. We're talking about Hero Trade number one from Bad Idea. That's right. We have Dinesh Shandasani's Hero Trade issue number one, courtesy of Bad Idea, back on the list. The most surprising independent comic book to come out from a publishing company that has yet to put out a comic book outside of this one that they kind of did. In secret, they just mailed out one issue to the select stores, not letting the store owners know who published it and said, if you want to order more, put your orders in. And not many stores ordered more. Only four of them did. And they were very lucky they did because when it was revealed that this was a sneaker drop type of marketing announcement behind this brand new comic book company that's going to be coming out in 2021... These books started selling, surprising the market, blowing past the $300 mark, $500, $900 average sales for a raw copy, and we were stunned to see 9.8s break the $1,750 mark last week. Jem hit him with the 9.8 sale. This week, we have officially cleared the $2,000 mark, almost hitting $3,000, coming in at $2,900. Man, you have raw copies selling for $900. We were shocked to see last week that James Gunn literally got himself a copy and that there were like actors in Hollywood that were collecting this. The buzz is real. When you got Hollywood involved in comic books, the word gets out and people get pumped. Comics start getting optioned. Oh, what's that? Yeah, we were just talking about one. And now we're seeing big publishers from Diamond, Comixology, CEOs and executives also posting about their copies and them getting hyped about an idea that wasn't so bad. Man, I like this book so much. Number two on the list, TMNT Adventures number one. That's right, the Archie Comics Ninja Turtles run. The Archie run, when they acquired the rights to produce this turtle comic, they knew that it would be a hit. These colored bandanas introduced to the pages for the first time. Quite a different version of storytelling before the cartoon, was it not? Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely more kid-friendly, not as dark, not as Frank Miller-esque as the Mirage title. This one introduces us to the first comic book appearance of Bebop, Rocksteady, and Krang. And this comic book, like many other key books, was a franchise that introduced a slew of characters in the cartoon first and made it so popular that when it hit the pages of an American comic book, it became a key moment. And that's what we have here. It's similar to Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis. It's similar to Harley Quinn in Batman Adventures issue number 12. And guys, be careful because there are two volumes of this run. Originally, it was just a three-issue miniseries. Then a year later, it was its own ongoing, which had a new number one. <laughs> Not only that, there are four versions of this number one issue. That's right. This acquisition by Archie offered some interesting distribution opportunities for our four turtles we have a non-upc standard cover we also have a new stand version of the standard cover and then whoa borders opened up we have canadian versions we have a non-upc as well as a new stand version that was sold in canada with a price variant of a dollar 25 on them now Let's take a look at some very impressive numbers. We have a CGC 9.2 standard copy doubling, going for what once was $80, selling for $160. We see a CGC 9.8 double in price in the same way, going from $300 to $600. The new stand, are we going to see a multiplier? We've seen it so many times on this list before. 
And it's happening here again. CGC 9.8 newsstands hitting $1,200. But get this, an ungraded Canadian price variant hit $400. Bucks. Comic fam, we have to wait to see what the newsstand effect is going to have to not just this comic, but to a lot of other comic books, especially if they exist out of country. Before we jump into number one on the list, make sure you like this video, make sure you're subscribed, and make sure you comment down below. We have a giveaway going on right now where you can win a Thor 7 Comic Time exclusive variant. All you got to do is drop that comment. Drop that comment, comic fam. And let's chat about number one on the list because we've been waiting. We've been waiting for the jaw-dropping record breaker of this book for weeks now. Raphael number one, the first appearance of Casey Jones, the first one shot from the TMNT run, the really second most wanted key collectible from the TMNT franchise. And that's not true because you have to include gobbledygook. But I digress. This comic book, we've seen major gains, but it's been scarce. We haven't seen anything at 9.6, anything at 9.8, but we did see lower grade copies just dry up. Nothing exists online. Inventory is barren, but we saw one hit this week. Hit him with the numbers. We had a huge sale in a CGC 9.6. Keep in mind that the prior record for this book was $1,020. We had a huge eBay auction end at $2,651, breaking even the CGC 9.8 record, which stands at $2,200. What is going on, comic fam? This comic book was impressing everybody when it crossed that $1,000 marker, and now it's hitting 9.8 prices just weeks later? This comic book at 9.8, I think is going to hit $5,000 this year. Yeah, it could because if the 9.6 is doubling up and the 9.8 is even more rare, you're, you might be right on that. This book has only crossed that $2,000 marker three times in comic book history. And two of those times happened this very week. Hit that subscribe button, comic fam. You know we're going to be here next week if it happens again. And as always... Geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, why don't you go ahead and check out some of the other videos on the channel? You can start with the one right here to my right, your left, or how about this one below it? <laughs> what do I say? My right, your left. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude.